Hello everyone, welcome to Ask Giri Physio Show, episode 9. I am Giri Srinivasan, registered physical therapist and your host. Today, we are going to discuss about how to fix ankle instability. You must be wondering why this topic now. We are going to see why. Because in the last just two weeks, I have seen such young people with so many chronic ankle instability issues. Now, everybody is raring to go for the sports season coming up with no pandemic restrictions. Everybody wants to go out and play, which we haven't done so much in the clubs and team sports in the last two years. Now, we want to go out and play rugby, soccer, cricket, whatever you call it, basketball, football, whatever it is. We need to make sure we have very stable wheels, stable ankles. And, you know, most of us would have experienced some kind of ankle sprains and strains in our lifetime. How did we take care of it? Did we treat it properly or we just put ice for two days and get back to the ground again? So we'll talk about it. So what is instability? You know, uh, it can involve multiple joints and structures uh, in the ankle and the foot area. And also it can occur in combination of few joints and ligaments or just one joint and ligament in isolation as well. So the common instability uh, is the lateral stability, which is outside of your ankle, because when you walk, you usually do that, right? So the outside of the ankle here, um, the ligaments there get sprained there. So the lateral ankle instability is very common. You can see about 85% of the people um, is, can get a lateral ankle instability. Medial ankle, it's not that common. It's only 5%. That's your ankle going, you know, this way, right? The straining that way that's very uncommon but i have seen few uh, deltoid ligament which is in your medial ankle is a little bit more stronger uh, and um, it's very unusual to go that way than the other way right high ankle instability it can be pretty much high in the chin and then high ankle area um, that are various reasons for that today's topic we are not focusing on that and also subtalar joint instability subtalar joint is very important for the stability of the ankle and the foot biomechanics and the gait and also how in your stance phase, when you hit the heel strikes on the ground, how the ground reaction force coming into that play in the ankle and foot, subtalar joint plays a very big role in that stability. So we're gonna focus on, um, yeah, again, chronic ankle instability here, that what does mean, what do you mean by chronic ankle instability, okay? And you might have an ankle sprain one day um, in the month of May, let's say, ankle sprain, a grade two strain, that means, you know, you torn few fibers, uh, you took yourself off the game and the sport, you iced it, you elevated it, you put wrap on it, and then swelling went down, pain went down, you went back to sport. You didn't do any retraining or anything like that. You didn't go see a physiotherapist to properly assess it, just an ankle sprain, why do I need a physio, right? And then you go back and then you see, you're spraining again in two months, and there is persistent pain after that. Then you again, you sprain after two months. And then you still have pain and dysfunction more than six months after your first sprain. Then you're developing this, going into the zone of chronic ankle instability, right? And this is one of the most commonest sports injury uh, because uh, we use our feet and ankle for almost every sport we play, right? And I just want to share a few examples of my current patients. Actually, three male patients I saw, all of them between 22 to 26 in the last two weeks, right? Um, uh, person A is having playing rugby, very strong and fit individual, goes to gym regularly, um, but he have some instability in his ankle. So he knows that he's wearing two socks even for a daily life uh, because to give more stability. And he's wearing brace and he's taping his ankle every time when he plays uh, the sport. So what's going to happen to the brain, right? If you're always giving external support for your ankle by wearing a brace or taping, how do you expect the brain to activate your stabilizers of the ankle to stabilize the neuromuscular control to for stability of your ankle when you play, when you pivot, when you load transfer, when you do single leg stuff, when you pivot, stop and turn, acceleration, deceleration. Brain has to do that calibration all the time. Uh, it's not going to do when you have external support. It's going to say, hey, you got somebody taking care of my job. Let me go to sleep. Right? You got to think about it before you put anything on your ankle. We'll talk more about it later. And the other patient, it's 23-year-old male, had several ankle sprains in his ankle. You know what I found when I assessed ankle? He has zero dorsiflexion. That means foot coming up. 
you should have about 20 degrees of dorsiflexion. flexion. That is one of the most important movement you have in your ankle. If God comes in front of me and asks me, which one movement you don't want to lose in your body, not, I will say dorsiflexion. Don't even take away a degree of dorsiflexion from me. Take away 20 degrees of hip flexion, I don't care. Right? Take away 20 degrees of knee flexion, I don't care. Please do not take my dorsiflexion away. That's how important dorsiflexion is uh, for everything you do. You know, it's not just sports. Sitting to standing, walking, climbing stairs, squatting, lunging. Dorsiflexion is limited. All those movement patterns are going to be de de defeated and also decreased. So, talking about the second patient, zero dorsiflexion on the right side, five degrees dorsiflexion on the left because he had multiple ankle sprains but never got treated properly. And his main complaint is hip pain and he's a heavy duty mechanic. So where do I start? In the hip or the ankle? Right? That's a question to think about. Definitely, we got to start from the ankle. Right? And also the third person I'm treating is this person is wearing two ankle braces, 22 year old uh, university student, two ankle braces for daily life and the sports. And he, he accepts that he has instability. This is the way he's going to manage it for the rest of his life. A lot of people do not know that it can get better. You can make it better. A lot of people accept, and this is the way ankle should be. It is normal. Having a little bit of pain in the ankle and instability is normal. It's not normal to have pain and instability in your ankle. Please, please go see your physiotherapist to get help. So just want to give you that share that example of my three patients, young patients, young active adults in the last two weeks who has chronic ankle instability. And that kind of prompted me to talk about this, to educate the community, educate the people that when you have a little ankle sprain, do not take it easy. When you have persistent pain more than six months, have instability, do not take it easy. Okay, biomechanics of ankle stability or instability or stability, I should say. What are the stabilizers around the ankle? We got so much stabilizers around the ankle, the passive stabilizers and the dynamic stabilizers. For under the passive stabilizers, you have the contour of the articular surfaces, right? How your, um, your leg bones, your tibia and fibula coming down, how it forms the dome and you got your talus down here, which is kind of a very unique bone and you know, in the, and then you got a calcaneum underneath and you got your, uh, you know, your navicular and cuneiform in the front, your metatarsals and your phalanges in the front. Your feet is one of the most beautiful architecture in the world, right? And we abuse them. We don't take care of them. So many feet problems, ankle problems we've been seeing every single day because we cage them. We cage them in the shoes all day. We even wear socks and shoes and slippers inside our own home. Can you believe that? Can you believe that when people talk to you like, I cannot be without indoor slippers. My feet would hurt. That is a very sad story, okay? It shouldn't be like that, okay? And also how many people have bunion problems, right? Why? Is bunion is gonna be treated by surgery effectively or proper alignment, biomechanical correction and corrective exercises? What is the importance of the arches? How you should be weight bearing normally? How is your awareness of weight bearing? How much time are you giving yourself in a day being barefooted? Are you connecting your feet to your brain? Research shows even if you wear a pair of socks, you block 25% of sensory information from your feet going to your brain. So basically you are doing a sensory deprivation. Do we need that? Your motor output is only as good as your sensory input. How much of sensory input are we blocking every day? How it relates to the stability? How it relates to the motor control, neuromuscular control. Just, just take a moment to think about all those things. How you are treating your feet. Ask yourself. Right? So, the, again, going back to the passive stabilizers, the contour, the shapes of the bones itself offer stability. It's a kind of, we call it mortise, right? So your ankle mortise is like this. It's going to move like that, right? So, and also the integrity of the ligaments. There is so many ligaments. I'm going to show you a picture later around the ankle, right? Both especially the front, back, the sides and the back and also the front. Most of them are on the sides, but some in the front. There are a few in the back as well, right? And joint capsule, integrity of the joint capsule and a lot of retinacular sheaths because we have so many tendons coming down, like, you know, from the leg down to the foot 
and we need some binding like you know we we do this as a tapes and binds for the wires coming out right conduits so same thing you're going to you need some binding to keep the tendons in place yeah to tuck them together and that's the job of the retinaculum it's like a facial structures okay don't let the tendons to go up and down or side to side just keep them all in one place that's your retinaculum right and tendon sheaths oh you have a tendon and you have a tendon sheath on the top uh, sometimes it can get inflamed give you pain also right and that's why you get you know synovitis we call it and the dynamic stabilizers are your adjacent tendons transferring the joint see the tendons in the feet is very unique and uh, it's it's kind of amazing to learn about them how the muscles on the one side inside and outside they form the sling mechanism with the tendons on top of the foot under the foot and how that force couple has to work together for your stability of your foot if one side is injured how it compensates and how we have to maintain that and all the small muscles of the foot and all the tendons going in front of the foot and into the toes how important are those right and how much are we using our toes in our daily life sometimes it's zero right because we don't do any barefoot stuff and gravity gravity is one of the stabilizers because gravity and the ground reaction force uh, create some impact and compactness into the joint to give a dynamic stability to the joints right and that subtalar joint is very important and the talus bone is very important for that purpose so this is kind of little idea about the stabilizers the passive and the dynamic stabilizers now just a little picture of the anatomy of the ligaments i'm not going to go into details you can see the medial ankle you see the deltoid ligament there and that's a very strong thick band and you don't usually sprain that one sometimes you sprain uh, but not very often the lateral ankle is the one you uh, kind of sprain quite a bit and you got in the front you got anterior talofibular ligament and also you have anterior tibiofibular ligament and also in the side you have the calcaneofibular ligament and in the back you have your um, you know posterior ligaments so the most common one is your anterior ligament the one in the front because that's the weakest link uh, that's the weakest ligament uh, compared to your other ligament um, your calcaneofibular ligament is it, it can take more than like 2 to 3% uh, 3.5 times more load than your anterior ligament um, so it's been tested so that's why you sprain that quite often so bones and joints of the ankle you can see them there uh, you got 33 joints and about 26 bones in the feet imagine how many joints and um, bones in the ankle and how many tiny ligaments connecting them and the big ligaments on the side what a wonderful architecture right in that one like you know it's we call that in, in an arch we have medial arch we have lateral arch we have a transverse arch how the arches communicate with each, each other and how these bones form the arch how the tendon slings maintain the arch right it, it's just beautiful and you have your uh, you know uh, capstone in the middle right and same thing you have your capstone here too um, so things like that subtalar joint i told you about your inversion eversion movements they come from your subtalar joint not from your ankle joint that's why that subtalar mobility and the, is very important that's why when you assess ankle sprain patients we check the talar tilt and to see if it is uh, less than 60 degrees or more than 60 degrees more than 60 degrees is not common and how is the relationship of talus with your tibia and fibula and the relationship of talus to the calcaneum as well and in the front your navicular and other cuneiforms and how are the ligaments there too because you have a lot of ligaments connecting your talus to the calcaneum talus to the tibia and fibula all those areas in the front back and the side right you have uh, yeah yeah we don't want to go into the details yes we have a lot of ligaments for that so those movements are very important you should have that 5 degrees of movement on inversion and eversion and just a picture i'm not going into the details to see how many structures are there in the in the anatomy of the foot you see so many muscles and look at all those ligaments coming and also look at all the tendons on the sides and the retinaculum the big white sheet in the front you see that's your retinaculum to keep everything in place you got few of them in the front of that ankle and in the side you see all the peroneus groups coming in and coming in the side behind your uh, bony prominence there and come and attaches in the foot sometimes with your lateral ankle sprain say right? sorry lateral ankle sprain like that like you know this ligaments are getting injured sometimes if the force is too much you can also um, rupture that uh, peroneus brevis tendon actually we have couple of patients in that so you can you have to rule out peroneus brevis tendon issues along with your lateral ankle sprain also sometimes you can misdiagnose people with that then you have to do rehabilitate them uh, yeah so now you see you see this wonderful architecture beautiful anatomy how everything is stacked in the small space and uh, out function and also you see all the uh, 
um, tendons coming to the toes also. What you don't see much here is the nerves. There's a lot of nerves coming into your, your dorsal peroneal nerve comes down, supplies uh, your great toe, then your uh, medial interosseous nerve and the lateral interosseous nerve supplies the bar top of the toes. Every two hours almost have like two, two branches coming out. That's why when you, when you put uh, two, like you know, when you have a narrow toe boxes, when you compress that area, you can irritate the nerves, you can get a lot of pain in the foot and you develop a bunion, you kind of push them over and then you compress the nerve, right? You can develop a lot of nerve pain also in that area. So it's amazing, isn't it? Lateral ankle sprain, you see that? You go like that and you strain the ankle ligament and there are few ligaments there. Anything you can strain most common is your anterior talofibular, which is right in the front of the ankle. So I told you this already, this information, your anterior talofibular, uh, sorry, anterior tibia fibular ligament is, um, no, talofibular. Anterior talofibular ligament is injured the most. And then your calcaneal fibular ligament, it has, it can take two to three percent higher load than your other ligament. Your posterior um, uh, fibular ligament is, uh, talofibular ligament is the one which is very leastly affected most of the time. So grading, uh, it's very simple. You can have a, just a stretch. The grade one is just a stretch with the very microscopic tears. And that's a grade one. Grade two is partial tear. And the grade three is a complete tear, right? Even uh, if you have a complete tear, you can get better with conservative management by doing proper rehab program. Chronic instability, as we told already, more than six months of recurrent sprains and giving away feeling, right? And you can't just wrap it up. You got to take proper treatment for that. So what are the types of chronic lateral instabilities? We have mechanical instability, you have functional instability, and you have pseudo instability. So what is a mechanical instability, right? That when ankle joint moves beyond the physiological limit of range of motion, it has too much movement. We call it hypermobility sometimes. You have too much movement and then it's not stable at all, okay? Uh, you, will, you know when your ankle is not stable. You should be able to, with some special tests, we should be able to demonstrate the ligament as laxity. There's laxity in that place. And functional instability, the, um, the two guys I saw the last week had functional instability, right? Subjective feeling, you know the ankle is not stable. It's not due to any of the ligament as laxity or anything, but due to the proprioception, which is your joint position sense, and the lack of that and the neuromuscular control. It's st Remember, strength and stability different. Strength, you know, everybody know what strength is. Stability training is different than strength training, right? Stability is motor control. The ability of your brain to activate certain muscle groups at a certain time for a certain task. It has to happen in a fraction of a second. Otherwise, you're going to sprain your ankle. That's stability training. That's motor control. That's brain and your muscle, the connection between them. You have to train them differently. It's not about strengthening, right? So this, this symptoms of giving away without any clinical or radiological uh, signs of laxity is called functional instability. Like, and the pseudo instability is the one like where you have, like you have pain due to, not due to actually, uh, due to the issues right in the ankle or the foot, but it can be a little bit of peroneal tendonitis we saw, any loose bodies, uh, you know, broken bones and small chips of bones floating in the joint capsule, joint cavity. And anterior impingement, like, you know, sometimes you see the picture there uh, in the front of the ankle, you'll have pain. I think I do have anterior impingement on my left ankle. One day in the dark, I stepped down and I didn't know the depth of the step. I just went and impacted. I do have a little bit of anterior impingement on my left ankle. I'm working on it as well. I could feel that. There are some special tests you can do to find that out and to work on it. And, and inflammation of the synovial sheath. All those things can cause some instability too. This is called pseudo instability. This is without ligament laxity. Instability happening due to other conditions, right? And management considerations, right? Most of these instabilities can be conservatively managed, right? And you have, you have full recovery in the 80% of the functional instability patients. Um, the one I have already last week, they're already showing improvements. They're understanding. It's all about education. It's all about empowering them with real evidence and truth, okay? And proprioceptive retraining, a lot of joint position sensory training with the foam pads and different types of foams and bosu balls and a lot of things we have in the gym to work on that. Neuromuscular control, a lot of stability training, right? That's different than your strength training. Postural control, because a um, lot of times you don't, you don't, you don't, you're not aware of even how you're standing, right? So um, just, just take a moment and do this drill with me. If you're sitting down, stand up right now. Take your shoes off, socks off, okay? Just stand straight, feet shoulder width apart, just stand right there, okay? 
and then feel are you putting equal weight on both sides 50 50 if you feel you're overloading one side you calibrate and you adjust that hips adjust that legs so that you're putting 50 50 on both your feet right that's number one then each foot you have a tripod remember the tripod okay um, you got one of the tripod in front of the big toe then the last toe the pinky and in the heel okay big toe small toe and the heel that's your tripod you have a tripod on your right foot you have a tripod on your left foot close your eyes and see those tripods are taking weights on each foot okay okay i can feel my yeah big toe small toe a little bit heel heel you'll see a little bit more your big toe and heel you'll feel a little bit more than your uh, outside pinky toe so try on the other side distribute the weight you got 50 50 first and that 50 percent in this guy three tripod and then 50 percent in this tripod and then just be there and feel that feel that awareness of that foot connecting to the earth or a hardwood floor or carpet whatever it is or the grass and then see when you have the tripod balance how that kind of stacks up your ankle and your knees your hips your pelvis your chest bone your neck your jaw and your head your posture starts from your feet that small correction will change everything up all the way up there just do the drill it's an awareness drill okay awareness through movement awareness through this that's why sometimes i tell my patients don't blast your music when you're doing exercises all the time because you're just focusing on the music and the words you have to be more aware of your movement aware of your senses coming from your body and that's the way you connect to the brain better rather than abusing your temporal cortex anyway so hope that drill helps to understand what i talk about postural control there are a lot of other exercises we do for that and you have to strengthen definitely there must be some weakness we got to strengthen the muscles not just the ankle you got to look at the whole chain ankle knee and the hips and your core all the way up there you got to strengthen a lot of things the whole kinematic chain approach is very important because when somebody comes with ankle sprain yes you got to treat the ankle sprain okay but see the ankle and feet and the hip knee ankle behind that pain and you see the human being who's carrying that ankle and the hips and the knees that's very important right the whole a person human being approach right and and then you can do a lot of sports specific drills depends on what your sports are do you need to jump and land too much or you need to cut do you need to accelerate and decelerate we train accordingly and um, you know we are we are fms certified functional movement skin certified physical therapists so we do a lot of training based on that and um, plus a lot of other courses so we can definitely get you back on your track so a lot of simple exercises, I put some sample ones here. Uh, it doesn't have to be this fancy reverse basso marching, reverse basso squats we do, basso lunges, you can do forward lunges, side lunges, backward lunges. We can put two bosses and do side lunges, right? And um, yeah, and also you can do the strengthening there. You're gonna heel lifts and then holding to weights or without weights. And also you have to check, you can easily screen your own stability, how stable your ankle is, right? Put your hands on the waist and then try to stand in one leg. Be safe, you have balance issues, don't do that, hold on to something. Don't fall and break your nose. So bring it up there and see if you can stay there. How your ankle, is it stable or it's doing like a fish out of the water? How's your hips, are you dropping? Are you dancing, you cannot stand, or if you're leaning? Watch out what you're doing. Check your ankle stability, how it is. And also another way to see how your ankle is dorsiflexion. We call it relative dorsiflexion when it's on the ground. How much it's moving up, you will know by a squat. Then if your squat is limited, your ankle has to be worked on on that, right? A lot of people I've seen in the gym doing weighted squats without checking their ankles. And those are the people who's gonna hurt their knees and hips and backs, right? And all you always tell, you know, move good or move better first before you load the movement, right? If you were planning to work out, if you wanna do some sports, if you think that something's not feeling right, consult your physiotherapist, do a complete movement screen and identify the dysfunctions, work on them first before you load them before you put do a, a weight lift or I mean what are weight lifting or you know um, deadlifts and things like that your ankles are very very important for that and are also for your running and other activities so these are all the stability exercises we do um, you know single leg deadlifts it, this is a perfect one but everybody doesn't start like this but wherever you are we have a whatever ability level you are we have a way to start and way to progress 
So you don't have to be an athlete or you don't have to be extraordinary for that, right? And the dynamic stability exercises, there's a star uh, thing he's doing on a lot of reaches, your forward reach and uh, you know side reach and uh, back reach and diagonal reaches. So many things we do, jumps, landing, and agility ladder and uh, medicine ball drills. And we do have something called foot beam um, where it really, it's really hard. Uh, it's almost like you're walking on a beam which is round and circular and then how to stabilize on that. Because those are things missing in our feet because we don't uh, use our feet the way we're supposed to. We only, you always put it in the shoes and you only walk on stable platforms, right? And uh, your feet, you're not giving a chance to behave like this, right? They are created to climb trees and, and you know, climb mountains and walk on uneven surfaces, but we don't. So, and uh, I did do an episode a couple of years back. Uh, I don't remember the exact topic. It's called Your Feet. If you go to physioshow.ca and go to season one, you can watch that episode about your feet. And uh, I got a lot of good feedback about that episode. So you'll understand the importance of your uh, bare foot um, very much. And if you have any questions about uh, being barefoot, uh, let me know. I can help you with that. There is barefoot hiking, barefoot uh, running, and uh, there's so much out there. And the recent research supports the best footwear is no footwear, right? Your barefoot is the best thing you can do for your feet, right? If anybody has to have another, other opinions, I can definitely um, educate them and I definitely uh, work with them to understand why it is important that way. So what else I can do? You know, if without treating your instability, just don't throw uh, a brace on it or tape on every day going to the game, right? Ankle support, orthotics, okay? Um, orthotics, again, it's only important and prescribed for very, very uh, small group of people who are highly indicated to use orthotics. Not everybody who has feet has to have orthotics because you're built with one. Your feet are created with everything you need. Don't make others tell you that you need something else to um, make your feet better unless you have some real big problems, right? If you have very big pronations on both sides, it's not able to correct by active exercises. Yes, I would agree you need some orthotics to keep proper alignment so other things are okay. But not every single person should own an orthotic, right? That's not right. Special shoes. Yeah, the multi-billion dollar shoe industry wants you to believe that you are not adequate, right? Your feet is not adequate. You need this and that to make it adequate. That's not true. Your feet has all the bells and whistles you need, you need and, um, for your, all your activities. You just need to use them properly and connect them to the brain properly. That's all it is. Surgeries. Surgeries are indicated for some chronic mechanical instabilities. There are surgeries to kind of reinforce the ligaments and things like that. And that's not the point of this uh, topic. So we're not going much into the surgeries for instabilities and the post-operative rehab. We're not going there at all. So to summarize everything, self-check, self-screen yourself, how good and how stable your ankle is. If you find instability, if you're struggling with it, consult your physiotherapist. Do not use brace and tape all the time until it's medically advised. Okay, so that is the whole point. So don't wait, go see your physiotherapist today. Hope this gave you some information about ankle instability and how to take care of them. And in the future episodes, we'll come up with some live exercises for this. Or if you have any questions, put it in the comment, we can deal with that. Okay, bye.